So, all right. So uh, let me start up with this question. This and the next two questions should be kind of similar in the same line of um, reasoning processes. So I'll do them all together. So this is the first question. Uh, it says on ideal monatomic gas at 295 Kelvin expense. A. Okay. Since it's talking about thermodynamic processes, let me just have the a PV diagram drawn. It'll help me kind of think through the situation that's been given in the question and uh, kind of focus my thinking. So it says something's expanding. So it says some um, pressure and pressure, it has some initial pressure, initial volume, and it'll, um, it'll go to some lower pressure and higher volume. That's what expanding means. And in the drawing, um, adiabatic process and isothermal process can't really be distinguished. They both look curvy. <laughs> so, it's, it, so let me just uh, remind myself that it's uh, adiabatic. And it asks, uh, oh, to, to twice its value to here. To V naught. What is its final temperature? Ah, okay. Good. So, if it were an isothermal process, then it would have been easy. It would have been 295, you know, isothermal. <laughs> um, so the difference between isothermal and adiabatic process, I guess I can summarize it this way. So if uh, a process is isothermal, then what I would say is uh, when you look at the product of pressure and volume, then uh, for an isothermal process, um, the pressure times the volume at one point is going to be equal to pressure times volume at another point, you know. This will be true because, you know, pressure times volume from ideal gas law is NKBT. So if your temperature doesn't change, then uh, this product of pressure and volume doesn't change. This is the case for isothermal. And you can have a very similar looking expression in the case of adiabatic uh, case. I guess I would call it adiabatic equation. So in adiabatic case, um, so uh, let me just cross out the things that no longer apply. So you don't have a nice connection to ideal gas law, but what you do have is an algebraic expression where pressure times volume raised to a power gamma is equal to pressure times volume raised to a power gamma. Gamma is um, a unitless quantity. And I will tell you, this is the one thing that I forget from semester to semester. <laughs> I, so I think for a monatomic gas, I think it should be 5 thirds, but I'm not 100% sure. So let me just double check. The way I'm going to double check is I'm going to look up our textbook and uh, make sure I didn't misremember it. It comes from, so your textbook goes through the derivation. Um, it, so I guess the way it's expressed is in terms of the specific heat under constant pressure process and the constant volume process. So let me look up adiabatic expansion. It's going to be mentioned somewhere around in the same set of topics. Thermotomic processes. Um, uh, adiabatic processes for an ideal gas, and I have a feeling it's going to be uh, described here. So let's look. So we are in the adiabatic processes, um, not that. We want, uh, uh, I think it's driving here. Uh, yeah, that's the gamma factor. The constant pressure specific capacity divided by constant volume specific capacity. One is bigger than the other. And I think they should, and yeah, this is the adiabatic equation. <laughs> and uh, they should give us some values of gamma that I can use. Uh, do they tell us? Or, you know, I can do the work and figure it out. Uh, all right. Um, so, so in order to figure it out, so I, so let me just uh, double check it. It's going to be, so the general expression for gamma is going to be Cp over Cv. And this is supposed to be for monatomic, if I remember that right. And to double check if I remember that right. I need to go to the section that describes the specific, specific capacity of ideal gas. So let me go look for that. Uh, content, uh, I 
uh, heat capacities of an ideal gas. So in this section, they go through some derivation and give you the expressions for constant pressure and constant volume. So constant pressure, it's a constant volume plus R, or the version that I like to use without reference to moles would be constant pressure is the constant volume plus instead of R, it should be um, it should be NK, no, um, so th this is the specific heat, so heat capacity per molecule, um, so this should be KB. And when you look through it, uh, yeah, you have the fact that constant uh, volume is equal to, so wherever I see R, I'm just going to replace with the KB, so D over to KB, that's the specific heat per molecule of ideal gas. And today, ah, okay, okay. They give these expressions for monatomic. It's going to be CP, 5 half KB divided by 3 halves KB. So you get 5 over 3. Okay, yeah. I did remember it correctly. But uh, worth the double checking, you know, because um, <laughs> I forget this every single time uh, or almost every single time. So, so here, what we are working with is with this, is this expression. The ideal, the, the adiabatic, um, adiabatic process formula. The pressure times volume raised to this power is constant. So at some moment, uh, at some point in the process, it's equal to another point in the process. So if they were asking me for something like um, final pressure, I can easily solve for that. Uh, now I don't. Uh, they are asking for final temperature. So I need to think through the algebra I am going to do. So I have this, um, um, so I have the ideal gas law. I feel like that's going to be useful. So let me write it down. Ideal gas law says that um, pressure times volume is NKBT. So for the final temperature, I'm looking for pressure times the final uh, volume. So, you know, I'm given information about initial temperature. I'm given information about change in volume. I'm not being given anything about pressure. So I think I want to eliminate my pressure variables that'll hopefully lead me to some expression that I can stare at for a while and figure out how, how I can solve for that, solve that for the final temperature in terms of other quantities. So uh, let me write down the expression for the initial pressure. So initial pressure is going to be this, solved for pressure. So it will be NKB initial temperature divided by initial volume. Good. Times initial volume raised to power gamma. Can do a little bit of simplification. Uh, cancel this with one factor here. So this becomes gamma minus one. That's going to be equal to the same expression, except these are now final quantities. NKBT final over final volume times final volume. Uh, so you know it's going to be gamma, and I'm going to cancel a factor of this. So it's going to be gamma minus one. Beautiful. So fortunately, by some coincidence, both of these have the same power here, which means I can divide both sides by this and have something that looks on the right hand side, some, have something that looks like V final over V initial raised to gamma minus one. And this quantity is something I can express, you know, twice its volume. So this should be two. And I can solve the remaining parts of the expression for final temperature T final. So with that idea in mind, so my T final is over there. So I want to move everything else to the left-hand side. So let me write that down, the version of that. So T final by itself and everything having moved to left-hand side, being written now on the right-hand side, is going to be, uh, I have an NKB that will just cancel out. So I won't deal with it. And I have T initial. And I will have the ratio VI over VF, and I can write that as one half, VI over VF, raised to power gamma minus one. 
So, so yeah, that's going to be, so I don't end up needing any constants. If I just uh, plug in my initial temperature to 95 Kelvin times the, uh, the, the ratio of the volumes, one half, raised to power of gamma, which we worked out was five thirds, or I remembered it and then double checked it, uh, minus one. Yeah, 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 that's why. So the final temperature is 185.8 Kelvin, or 186. Three significant figures should be enough. Okay, so this question, so let me read it a little bit before I start erasing some of the previous work. Monatomic ideal gas undergoes quasi-steady. I wish I still had the idea about the expansion thing. Uh, to in which its final volume is, ah, uh, yeah. If I do undos, uh, how much can I undo? So let me uh, start from here and then just to make changes from here. So, um, uh, so quasi-steady. Adiabatic expansion, what we had before, in which the final volume is 3.3 times instead of what we had before. So we'll say, okay, my final volume is 3.3 V0. Okay. Uh, what is, how is the pressure of the gas changed? Okay, so we don't need to worry about temperature. So I think I can actually um, not do all this work that, uh, that I had to do. And uh, I still verify that it's monatomic, so I can still use this. And the algebra gets considerably simpler, I think. So all these substitutions I had to do to uh, re-express things in terms of temperature, no need. I can just uh, uh, express things in terms of pressure. So um, I want final pressure expressed in terms of initial pressure. So I can just uh, rewrite my final pressure on the left-hand side. Just I'm just, you know, flipping it and then move everything over to the original left-hand side, then it's going to be initial pressure times Vi over Vf. And this time just raise to gamma, not gamma minus one, because you're just dealing with the pressure. So I think I just need to work out this to get the numerical factor that will go in here. It will be a unit less number. So uh, doing it in uh, Sage Math, Vi over Vf, that's going to be 1 divided by 3.3 .3 raised to the power gamma uh, 5 divided by 3. And I think it'll do decimal approximation, yeah. 0 0.137, 0 0.137. And if you compare this to what it would be for an isothermal expansion, you'll see that this is less. Because in adiabatic expansion, the temperature also changes, it decreases. So um, in an isothermal, so you know, in an isothermal expansion, it would have been um, 0 0.303. So this is like more than half as much or less than half as much. So, yeah. So this question says uh, when a gas undergoes a quasi-static uh, isobaric change in volume, okay, from 10 to 2.3, that's going to be compression. 10 joule of work from an external source are required. What is the pressure of the gas? Oh, okay. So I guess uh, the tools that I need to use are completely different. So I'm still going to need a PV diagram to kind of think of my way through. So let me uh, leave that. Okay. So let me start out with a PV diagram. This is my PV diagram. So I'm just going to use the labels, um, uh, labels, you know, initial volume, final volume. Um, so initial volume, it, it looks like it's going to be larger than final volume. So we'll keep that. And um, it's uh, a isobaric constant pressure, so it's gonna be um, going from here to here. The pressure won't change. So the work done, um, yeah, yeah. And we are given information about work done, so that's a good thing to kind of uh, keep in mind. We are given how much work done is um, the tangible of work. So let me call this W naught. We are given that. Um, and it's uh, asking for what is the pressure of the gas, <laughs> given all these things uh, uh, are fit together somehow. So let me start by just writing some things down. So apparently, um, so since we are given the amount of work, let me write down the expression for work. So work done, especially in isobaric case, it's gonna be pressure times delta V. 
Oh, I think that has everything I need. So uh, like, let me just deal with the absolute value so that I don't have to uh, worry about signs. So change in value, that's just going to be, um, you know, V final minus V initial, or with the numbers given, 7.7 .7 liters. And the, and the work done is given. So I can, this is one equation with only one unknown work, the pressure. So I can solve this for pressure. Pressure is going to be work done divided by absolute value of change in value. Yeah, sorry, I was gearing up for something more complicated using the first law of thermodynamics and all this stuff. And I don't think I need it. This, this uh, just to uh, get the pressure in terms of everything you know. Yeah. So um, let me just do one thing because the, the unit that it gives, liters, that's not basic SI unit. Uh, one liter is now one cubic meter. So I'm just going to use Ofram Alpha so that Ofram Alpha can do convert unit conversion for me. So I'll say 10 joules divide by, and absolute value, you know, 10 minus uh, 10 liters minus 2.3 liters. And Ofram Alpha will do the unit conversion on its own and give me an answer in terms of Pascal somewhere. Uh, wait, is there a Pascal somewhere here? Joule per in Pascal's. Pascal's, yeah, 1299 Pascal. Okay, that's it. Yeah, simpler than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs>